Okay, good afternoon traders. I hope everybody's doing well and having a good trading week. Just a quick update. Uh, we're going to cover the majors and a bit of what's happened today. Started with the dollar index. The dollar itself is in an interesting position. I think we're lined up for, for another move higher, to be honest. Um, I want you guys to take a look at 106.50 as your gauge point. So this is a level that I have my eye on, and I'll be looking for this weekly bar to close back above uh, 106.50. That'll give us the, the, the bit of confidence that we're going to see momentum push coming into next week. Of course, FOMC tonight, we're expecting fireworks, but if we take the overall context of the market into consideration, I think we're going to start to see a bit of a dollar push. Whether that rally is short-lasted or not, you're definitely going to find multiple trading opportunities using the smaller time frame. So look, what we want to see is we want to see to, uh, this week's buyer's candle, this week's bullish engulfing candle, take out the last couple of weeks and close back above, in fact, well above 106.50. Um, that would be the ideal area of interest for ourselves, to be honest. Now, I want you to keep an eye on the four-hour time frame. The four-hour time frame is what we're going to be looking at. Now, again, there's your 106.50 level. I was hoping when I saw this engulfing candle this morning, we would have seen a bit of progression onwards and upwards. We didn't quite get that, but that slight dollar strength has helped currencies like Aussie today, dollar Swiss today. We started to see a bit of a push. So there are two trades that we both took uh, on the trading floor and the two trades that are posted to all of our members. So we want to see four hour phase one. Just let that break through big solid momentum candle continuation bars. Let's see dollar drive past this recent high point. And we're looking at a break of 106.82 as the actual break of a high we can see now this current four hour candle not much movement to be honest and so in lack of buyers you had a, a sort of a, an extended doji candle there again showed equal numbers numbers of buyers, buyers and sellers don't be too phased don't make rational decisions don't say buyers have left the market just yet there's just not much happening right now and of course pre-fomc we can expect that so use this area understand the scenario the picture we're trying to paint and should the market fall into place tomorrow, Friday, next week, you're going to have a little bit more confidence as to what direction you should be trading in and, of course, what trades you should be taking. So just from a dollar index standpoint, let a four-hour break that previous high. Weekly close wants to stay well above 106.50, and I think that will help us gauge how we're going to trade next week. There's your confirmed four-hour uptrend. You've got two high, higher highs and you've got two higher lows. We want a continuation of four-hour trend, and that should open the doors for the remainder of the week just to look at euro now on the flip side um we can see again if you, just to take a look one second just to take a look at where price is positioned on euro um we haven't seen too much at all you've got this 1.0160 level is an area of interest and just to show you on a smaller time frame price is just flat as a pancake we're stuck there we want to see price break below and drive below now i've got this 10 50 level as my area of interest i'd like to see price back down testing these lows and dollar index and dollar strength is going to have to kick on to really see this move if we want to see this move quickly i was eyeing up a one hour course short earlier this morning when we started to see a big bearish engulfing candle come in but that level sort of threw me off so if we can break below and stay below i'll definitely open up the doors to further shorts and we can see really in here price has been tied up so many times so don't worry about trying to be aggressive and getting in immediately. Just trying to get in 10 or 20 pips ahead of your friends. Don't worry about that. Let momentum show you where it's going. Once we see price moving, we may be able to capitalize on some of the smaller time frames. And so as soon as we see four-hour trend like this, that to me isn't trending in the sense we're seeing lower high, lower lows and consistent cycles. We're trending in the sense that we're seeing clean and clear direction. You're talking nearly 200 pip drop there over the space of a couple of days. Should we see something like that again, I would be straight onto the 15 minute time frame looking for core setup. So as you can see here, if we're looking at these bounces off the 20 moving average, just to show you a couple, there's tons, right? So four hour leads the way we wanna see uh, what's happened here. We wanna see that here back into 10050. Should we see that smaller time frame cyclicity Will definitely lead the way and open the doors to potential trading opportunities so again just because we're stagnant at the minute it doesn't matter don't dive in just paint your picture build your scenarios and as the market starts to take on and show us a bit of direction we can then make a decision as what to do next where we're positioned on pound on cable that 120 50 level has been rejected and 
if I'm honest, I don't want to see price. I don't want to trade price while it's trapped in here. 120, 50, 121, all the time it's in here, it's irrelevant. I was chatting to one of the guys earlier who was in for some coaching. And I said, if you're worried about where price is positioned, look at the most recent low point, And I've highlighted that here. And look at the most recent high point, And I've highlighted here. Should we break above that? It opens up the door to safe and confirmed buying back into 125 and above 125 would be amazing. Quite an extension, but again, if we see price up there, fantastic. And of course, if we break below this low point, we open up the door to further selling. So anything in between trapped inside this range, we're not too fussed about trading. And you can see what I mean here by um, as it's drawn on the four hourly time frame. So anything in between is just simply a range. I would like to see price back below 120. If we break 120, then that is your confirmed area to look for the continued shorts. And my first target would be 100 points, bringing price back into 119. So don't worry about where we're positioned just yet. But if we start to take out recent lows and we see momentum drive, again, if we see that short-term rally on the dollar, it should help push, uh, price push lower here. So breaks of 21, uh, 20, 50 will open up the doors to intraday shorter time frame trades, 5 minute, 15 minute. Confirmation of hourly core setups and hourly momentum trades will be once we break 120. And you've got 100 pips into 119 to look for your positions. Aussie, Aussie's been beautiful today. Um, I messaged and I mentioned to you guys that, in fact, look, this here is still a weekly uptrend. It's only, sorry, a daily uptrend. It's only not a daily uptrend anymore when price breaks past that recent low. And just to give you that exact low price, that is 0 0.6869. If price breaks that point, we are no longer in a daily uptrend. And I'll definitely start to look for more confirmed shorts. Today, we've already moved over 100 points. And the weight of the market is definitely, definitely bearish. This morning in the groups, once we started to identify our patterns, I said to you guys, that there, the first seller bar that closes below the 20 moving average, is your confirmation candle. And I like to call that the amber light. So you're, you're, on, you're, you're waiting. You're waiting. You're ready to pull the trigger. You're ready to get into a trade. Where we got confirmation, and what I said to you guys, is wait for price to break the low. Because we have been tangled up in here. There has been lack of momentum in this area. We only want to trade clean, clear setups. Like there. Like there. So we had to wait for price to break that low to confirm. We never dive into a trade just because it takes out a previous low or previous high. We always wait for the bar to close. When the bar closes, it confirms exactly where it's closed. The market's not going to change. That bar's not going to change color, appearance, anything. That's your confirmation that price is now heading to the downside. Now, since that point, if you had a sell stop uh, set up at the low of the market, you'd have been 40 odd, 45 pips up in the space of six, seven hours, highs of around 60 points. So, that's all we need to see if we're looking for our strong beat week first thing in the morning and our momentum-based setup to get in. On the back of that, if we look at some alternative Aussie positions, Aussie CAD, there was a beautiful core setup on the 30-minute time frame this morning. Exactly at the same time we was identifying Aussie weakness. Phase 1 goes down, phase 2 goes up, hits the 20 moving average, first seller's bar to close below the 20 moving average, and down we go. This reward to risk was fantastic. It was 20 points worth of risk for highs of 66 points. So a three to one in play there. And potentially, we could get another market drive if we bounce back off that 20 moving average and look for another core setup short. Aussie Kiwi, I don't typically trade myself that often. Aussie Swiss, same thing. Phase one down, two up. First seller's bar to close below the 20 moving average. Seller Aussie weakness dominated. Look where we finished. Price has come to a stalling point at a round number 0 0.66. That's your take profit area. Wait for a pullback and let's see if we can go again tomorrow. Great, great trade then. You're looking at again over 50 points worth of movement there. Euro Aussie, exact same thing. I highlighted this to you guys earlier. There's your cycles of cyclicity confirming a bullish upwards push. That bar there closed above the 200 moving average. Remember, the 200 moving average is your slowest moving average, giving us the clearest indication of trend, whether we're above or below over that time frame. So confirm to us we're back above the average price of the last 200 hours, a significant buying point. That individual candle itself was around 60 points. It's a 60 point bullish drive. And then we've got a continuation of over 100 pips after that. So anyone that's still riding this, I know some of you are well done if you're still in this. You've got 111 points running profit. If we close the way we close here, for me personally, this could be signs of a one-hour exhaustion candle following on from an indecision candle doji point 
the hour before. That would be my area of take profit, but each to their own. And just to show you what that uh, doji candle looked like on a five minute time frame, it allowed us to get another core setup to go back again. So it, when we talk about scaling in, we talk about looking for the drive, pull back, touch the 20, another entry to come into the move. Phase one, pull back, another entry to come into the move. That's scaling in, that's using multiple time frame analysis to continue trading that same initial move that you're in on the one hour time frame. So just stuff we teach on our mentoring programs, our coaching programs, our courses. Pound Aussie, again, I'm sure you get my point now. One, two, one, two, big buyers bar close above, up we go. You're talking again, over 100 points move here on Pound Aussie. This was posted, I posted this to you guys this morning as well. Aussie yen, I mean, I, you can see what I'm seeing here. So lower highs, I, I'm sure you get the picture now. And of course, that's Aussie weakness that were dominant. Kiwi's in a very, very similar position. In fact, Kiwi's a bit messier on the daily time frame, but I can see the weight of the market's very, very weak in terms of selling there. So you've had a real weak day today. There's your phase two, quite messy here. First seller's bar closed below the 20 moving averages. That bar, if you entered at the lower the bar, you'd be running about a 60 point gain over a 30 point risk. So a two to one risk to reward ratio. And again, as soon as we start to flatten out, buyers look like they're pushing back in. Um, you're coming up to 62.50 in about 20 points time. So that'd be an area of interest for me definitely to start looking at closing out of my trades. Just to run the eye across a horizontal level, you can see prices struggled where we're at now. That'd be your take profit point. And of course, we use our major currencies to understand what our minor and our cross pairs are up to. So if you're looking at Kiwi dollar to be running out of steam, that's Kiwi weakness. If you were short Kiwi Swiss as an example, you'd gauge your major currency to understand actually Kiwi could be running out of steam against the strongest currency being the dollar. Dollar is king, remember? So you'd relate that back to your cross pairs or your miners and think about scaling out your positions based on our major slowing down. So something to think about, guys. Dollar Swiss, uh, there was a good trade we posted this morning. Uh, momentum did run thin as we started to push higher. But again, the thing with Dollar Swiss, and I'll just show you from a daily time frame. Where we're positioned, this is a phase two, right? And you can see we've got a few uh, areas of interest levels in here uh, that we've seen in the past. If I wasn't so biased, and I'm not biased, but I think it's the next move we get in terms of dollar strength, I'd be potentially looking at a core setup short from that. So I'm not going to trade a daily time frame, but what I'm going to look for is I'm going to look for price on the smaller time frames to break above this point. And in fact, the best scenario we may see here is an inverse head and shoulders that would lead and take price back into that sort of 96, 97 region in here before we get another cycle to potentially go again. So dollar Swiss is of interest. Dollar CAD I'm not really excited by, but 130 is such a significant level for, for dollar CAD and, and it's a historical level. We'll be looking for one, two, bounce and look for a move back above that 130. So dollar CAD I'm not really interested in unless we get back above 130. Dollar Yen I am interested in. Dollar Yen, I want you to use this 135.50 as your gauge. And for those of you that trade with me, know that all my levels are round numbers or, um, or, or, or blocks of increments of 50. And that's how I trade on an intraday basis in moves of 50. So understanding where we're positioned here, we've got our recent strength. There's your higher low in play. I'd like to price to make a new higher high back above 135.50. And I'm going to be, I'm going to, going to ask you guys to analyze Dollar Yen on a four hour time frame, especially intraday traders, because it can get choppy, it can get messy on the smaller time frames, but I like the way that we're starting to see price form. So I want you guys to look for a four hour bullish push above 135.50, pull back, retest, and back off we go. And we'll be looking for what will be our third cycle in trend, which is still a valid trade. And I believe there's lots of upside rewards here. There's tons of potential to continue trading. Um, so yeah, four hour cycle back above 135.50. And again, you've got all of these high points to take into consideration, 137 and of course a high of 139.38. So plenty of upside potential should we see those moves. But guys, just to recap, we've got FOMC tonight. I just wanted to let you know where the markets are positioned and what to look for. Map out your scenarios. There's no harm in having as many scenarios as you need. But then when the market falls into one, you're going to have a lot more confidence on how you take action and pull the trigger to get into a trade. But as always, guys, we're always here to help. So reach out. If you have any questions, let us know. Tons of coaching available. Book your sessions. We're in Manchester on Tuesday. That's Tuesday the 23rd. That's a live trading event. 
our senior team are up there. We've changed the schedule. We're going to be taking trades from 8 a.m. in the morning um, as the market's been incredibly busy across the European session recently. We'll be trading all throughout the afternoon and we'll probably be back in, in, in London at the end of the month. So good stuff, guys. Hope to see all of you soon. Take care and all the best.